Hey, this is Oliver from Camelot, and I'm talking to Horn Throwers. If I not, don't swallow my tongue saying this. <laughs> Well done, throwers. We're here with Oliver from Camelot, the keyboard player. Uh, thank you very much for letting us interview you today. You've got a very unique sound in the way of power metal. Like, I don't really think there's another band that sound quite like you. So uh, I was wondering where that approach came from, like who influenced it, um, just basically where you draw all your inspiration from. Um, I think it might uh, come from the fact that we have a wide musical background. I studied uh, classical music and, and jazz, so I'm not like a, let's say, a metal uh, player per se. But uh, so it's coming from different classical styles, jazz, um, and also the other guys. You know, they they listen to so much music besides metal, so that's basically the reason why. So, do you think the kind of more progressive elements in Camelot come from your love of jazz? Then it's it's definitely a part part of that. Yeah. Experimenting with sounds, uh, working a lot of in studios with different setups. So, it's, it's amazing. Go, uh, talking about uh, sort of like uh, different genres of music, do you feel it's a bit? silly or maybe ridiculous the amount of subgenres we now have in metal and also what if you had to pick a subgenre what would you uh, place Camelot in? I mean first of all it's really cool that you have so many different uh, subgenres uh, like you say um, because then I, I wouldn't be at home in certain parts of the metal world you know as, as, as a classically trained player but but it's really cool that, that you have such a widespread audience over so many different styles um, so that's yeah it's, it's fantastic you know uh, that you have that you can also see nowadays in the, in the past the festivals were uh, pretty clearly split you know yeah the, the death stuff and the progressive stuff and traditional metal now it all comes together you have different bands from different genres on one festival so that's a that's a really cool thing so where, where what subgenre would you put camelot in because i've heard that you're kind of power power metal prog metal just a mixture of those things would you say maybe like symphonic progressive mm. metal yeah i'd say that yeah i'd agree with that yeah i, I can definitely agree with that it's uh just saying, I, I completely agree with you about the diversity within metal. It's actually it's a really nice thing that we've got now. We've got a new album called Haven that's coming out in May. Um, I was just wondering if you could tell us maybe a little bit about what fans can expect on the new album. Um, well, we try to to uh, include new elements with every album. Of course, we don't uh, we don't want to stand still. On the other hand, we always have to keep the well, let's say the, the traditional Camelot sound. Uh, it's always we're always experimenting with new guests, you know, new singers. And uh, as as I said before, in the studio, I work with different setups, orchestrations. You know, we uh, we change sounds. We include uh, real players, string or, or uh, woodwind instruments and stuff. And uh, we tried this time to go a little back, a little bit back to the Black Halo area. You know, what, like um, I love this record, Black Halo, the production. Yeah. So it's it's a bit of a mix of that old approach and and, and the new styles, which were influencing us uh, over the past years. Well, um, we know that you're a multi instrumentalist and you play, play keyboards and guitars. Uh, do you actually record any uh, guitar work on any Camelot albums or even with any other bands that you've worked with, like Doro and uh, who else? Did you say? Blaze Bailey. Blaze Bailey, have you? Yeah, I've produced a lot of bands and I play a lot of guitar for them. Oh, okay. But it's often, um, that's often in the production that you have the, the, certain names on the CD, but then the producers play a lot of the guitars. Yeah. I, I can't tell you the names of bands in that case, yeah. but it, that, that's a common uh, thing. And so I, in, in, in Camelot's case, I uh, play a lot of guitar on the, um, on the demo tracks. And then Tom is changing that stuff. Of course, not everything, because a big part comes from him, the riffs, but uh, certain songs come, come like originally from me and I play guitar in it. So he takes it and he changes, he takes whatever he likes and whatever he dislikes. He comes up with a new stuff. Ah, so that's pretty good. Uh, talking again about you working with Doro, Blaze Bailey, who are obviously very legendary figures in uh, heavy metal. I was just wondering if are there any like memories or sort of achievements of like working with them that you you have that are kind of like 
like interesting stories maybe from like working with these people yeah tons I mean we would have to expand this this interview now for <laughs> some hours like especially place that we were in we were in Birmingham for for a long time um, back then it was with the drummer of Halloween now Daniel Löble he was in the band and the bass player of um, of Doro and a uh, Italian guitarist who is now in Doro taking my place from back then and it was really really fun time you know we were driving through through England and we were in the back of a trailer like all dark and it was it was like suicide but but Blaze is such a great personality and I, I feel often sorry that he never made it back so far at least to to a bit of higher level yeah well I I, I have noticed that he's actually a very good frontman as well I actually saw his band Wolfsbane in uh, Bloodstock in 2013 and he puts on a great show and he just he's a fantastic performer as well so it must have been great performing with uh, such a legend you know yeah, well, yeah I mean I mean, uh, Blaze has done, done all of these, even from Sid Maiden, not exactly. me, so I, mean, I can't really... Yeah, I was uh, just wondering, you recently changed labels on the last... Uh, it's, it's the upcoming album will be on Napalm. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was wondering maybe what the reasons for the change were and what your experiences dealing with Napalm Records have been lately, like, um, how you found working with them. Um, the reason for the change is so many things it's money it's also what, you know they present a certain plan what they what they will do for us you know like what, what kind of advertisements uh, video coverage and all these things so we get these offers from labels and it, this time it was a really really hard decision because there was another label big label um, making a really interesting offer but in the end it's it's also how do, how does it feel to communicate with the people that's very important you know and napalm was like you can call us like the, the, the president or vice president like at any time you know if, if you want to call us in the night call us we're there for you you know Camelot is top priority and that was in the end the most convincing thing not the money not, not the rest but this personal thing yeah um, that, that certainly means a lot just from our experience dealing with record labels you kind of get a feeling right away with how they communicate with you right. like, um, I've but we've been on so many labels you know I've, I've been with bands I think on almost every bigger existing metal label uh, well I've noticed it's uh, Camelot we've been on like, SPV and Nuclear Blast yeah, and things like that so Edel Music which is also a big one uh, yeah and then, and then Nuclear in the past with yeah, Epica and stuff so a lot of I, I, I know basically people from all labels they're all good guys hard working this time Napalm was the most convincing offer well, that's good to have a lot of contacts in the music industry how did you feel uh, the reception to your last album Silverform uh, was sort of like just in general like you know your most recent release Silverform I mean it, this was a very exciting time also I, w I was quite nervous because new singer is, is like it's like you know it changes everything yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I, I just didn't know how the reception is going to be and the second album is also uh, really crucial because the first album people are still curious you know they might buy it just to to check it out and this yeah. time it will will show if they really liked it you know so yeah. this is always a bit like uh, like in the second um, election period of a president or so you know what I mean yeah, yeah. exactly uh, that about wraps it up I'll just ask um, like what can we sort of like say to anyone that's new to Camelot what can they expect when they see you live like kind of and also like set list wise tonight what can we expect from you guys like, tonight like, kind of... um, I haven't seen the set list yet <laughs> <laughs> you know that, that's really something we, we, we change something the set list last minute so we need to learn all these songs and uh, uh, we I hope I think we play one song from the new record just to introduce it like a special surprise but we can't play too much that would be you know too much for the audience I mean, this yeah. is the first time you played that song live from the new um, yesterday we played in Dublin I was actually did we play it there I had the worst days these days I missed my flight from Germany uh, uh, I had a total technology crash, like it was, it's like horrible streak of bad events I hope is changing tonight so I don't really recall last night it was uh, was a mess <laughs> yeah oh well I, I hope you're much more luckier in the future <laughs> well yeah thanks a lot for taking time to interview yeah. us really appreciate it because it, it means a lot thank you, guys, <laughs> thank like, you. thanks for your uh, work in metal and stuff it's oh, thank uh, you. you know the, the greatest thing for us is to see the the young 
journalists or musicians? I don't know if you guys are musicians as well. Or uh, uh, well, I'm a musician and I do this on the side. So okay, and, and that's that's a really inspiring and, and, and happy factor. You know, I, yeah. I can see it's the the metal crowd got so young. And the cool thing about the scene is that you have old people, and you have young people, yeah. and everybody's together. I'm, I'm also I told you I'm in the classical music and jazz, and people are always asking me, how is it there with all these dudes, long hair, they look so dangerous, and I say, hey, it's the greatest feeling, you know, it's like, in the, in the, in the festivals, somebody's falling down in the, in the, mob, uh, in the, I have a different word in German, <laughs> and uh, other people are helping him up, and at a certain pop festival, he would have been trampled to death, you know, and, uh, uh, different, different music crowds all have different effects, you know, it's, 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 yeah. There's a kind of almost like this feeling. It's maybe a bit cheesy, but it's a feeling of like brotherhood, isn't yeah, it? Like in Netherlands. Yes, and, yeah. And the cool thing is, luckily, it's staying underground. We always are complaining, hey, why are we not making it to the mainstream radios? But I think it's it might be a good thing, you know. Yeah, like like this, we're we're staying a bit, you know, under you know, the radar. <laughs> they are them. This is us. At least it's kind of uh, you know it's earnest and like the people. It's a genuine passion for it, like in you know, the small yeah. community that yeah. have it. Um, yeah, thank you. It's been a very interesting yeah. interview. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks.